Pain, that medically elusive evil. What about changing the focus from controlling pain to understanding pain as more than a symptom? Can pain be cheated? My name is Dr. Dean, chiropractor and physiotherapist. My goal is to reframe how medicine understands pain to improve care. This podcast series is dedicated to a same-day conservative treatment for low back pain. This podcast has a companion published article number 33. Welcome to the Pain is Not the Only Problem podcast. Article 33. Pain is not the only problem. Epidural injection. These articles intend to reevaluate the prevailing clinical practices thought to manage low back pain, submit and debate novel low back pain contributors and mechanisms, meet patient expectations and satisfaction and clinically meaningful results, recommend a conservative non-surgical course of care to override pain instantly, and restore ADLs and patient confidence on the first visit at low cost. Does nerve blocking treat the low back pain symptoms? Or does it treat the problem? What can be learned about a clinician that recommends an epidural injection as a primary or only treatment for low back pain? Does this treatment choice demonstrate the limitations of the clinician's knowledge about the whole human system and that the clinician's recommendation is frighteningly reductionist? According to Mullen et al.'s research 2016, the first direct spinal puncture in a living person is credited to James Corning in 1885, who injected a cocaine solution without medical basis into the epidural space of T11 to T12 levels of a man who was habituated to masturbation and suffered from spinal weakness and seminal incontinence. Take a step back and look at this. The T11, T12 epidural space has nothing to do with sexual cognition. During the report of findings, the patient should be informed about the risks and benefits of epidural injection, as well as the mechanisms of the treatment. More importantly, it must be explained to the patient that epidural injection does not treat the problem. It only attempts to alleviate pain. Therefore, the problem persists underneath the mask pain and that the problem may become worse. A treatment of epidural injection is prescribed when the other presenting diagnostic features are not considered, whether diagnosed or not, and with a focus only to treat low back pain. Again, this represents the reductionist practice of treating a bullseye and not treating the whole bull. A common report of findings discussion with a patient who has been prescribed epidural injection might go something like this. Your diagnosis is back pain of unknown cause, likely a pulled muscle. In this statement, the doctor is trying to describe what has happened, how it happened, and why it happened. But you will notice that the doctor is only describing a likelihood and has not provided or demonstrated any specific findings to explain a pulled muscle. If you do not get the injection, you will remain in pain. This is the attempt of the clinician or the doctor to describe what will happen with or without the treatment. But you will notice that the doctor assumes that the epidural injection will always prevent pain, which is not true. I recommend the injection. I don't have any other options, maybe physical therapy. This comment describes the clinician's scope of practice. A recommendation of injection and nothing else describes the limitation of the doctor's scope of practice. There are other treatments out there. I don't know if they work any better. This is the clinician's attempt to describe what other options there might be instead of epidural injection. But the doctor is also demonstrating they have not done their due diligence to make connections with other cross-culture clinicians in order to give their patients a non-invasive option of care. The advantage is reducing pain. The disadvantage is no pain reduction. The doctor is trying to describe here the advantages and disadvantages of the epidural injection. You will notice here that the clinician is describing only reducing the pain and the possibility that there will be no pain reduction, but the doctor or clinician is not describing function and isn't meeting patient values or patient expectations. 
The risks include unresolved pain. This statement by the doctor is attempting to describe the risks of epidural injection, but you'll notice here that the doctor has not described the more severe risks such as infection and death. The injection works differently for different people. This is an attempt of the doctor to explain expected treatment results and a time frame. But you'll notice that the doctor does not describe what they're going to do in the absence of pain reduction or if the treatment plan causes infection or worse health outcomes. You might experience less pain. This is the doctor's attempt to describe improved health aspects and to the extent of the health aspects. But it doesn't address improving work habits, occupational encumbrances due to low back pain, or other lifestyle contributors such as enjoying life. The doctor also is not able to describe what will happen if the patient does not experience less back pain. If it doesn't work, we can do another one. This is the doctor's attempt to describe what they will do if the results are not satisfactory. And notice that the doctor is only willing to repeat the same procedure. The doctor is not willing to offer the patient other options. There are no guarantees with epidural injection. This is the doctor's attempt to describe efficacy. In this disclosure, they are stating that epidural injection may work and it may not, but that they are not held accountable to the patient in any way for the results of their treatment recommendation. The aforementioned discussion illustrates a failure of the clinician to completely describe the epidural injection treatment as it is reported within the prevailing research. It should not be a stroke of misfortune that a low back pain patient is stranded in a clinician's office with only an epidural injection prescription, a treatment recommendation that is invasive and comes with substantial risk. The patient is entitled to a conservative care option, even when the managing clinician does does not offer one in office. Patients with low back pain don't always make the wisest decisions regarding their care, so it is the duty of the clinician to properly explain the treatment plan with an emphasis on risk, number needed to treat, recurrence, addiction, dependence, and potential failure of the treatment. Epidural injection has a well-documented history of poor efficacy in the research. According to Mullen et al. 2016, the scientific proof that epidural corticosteroids are effective against back pain and sciatica is hardly convincing. According to Pinto et al. 2012, 23 RCTs involving approximately 2,000 patients with symptoms of sciatica who had not undergone previous back surgery reported 3 points for leg pain reduction and 0 for back pain at 12 months in 2 years. No differences were seen for back pain, leg pain improvement, and disability. Clinically meaningful validation studies and consensus statements regarding pain and disability suggest that a minimum change of 10 to 30 points is required before the effects of a treatment can be clinically meaningful. In systemic review and meta-analysis assessing 115 trials with continuous outcomes, there was no difference between epidural injection and placebo. In this meta-analysis, after all criteria for reducing bias were ruled out, placebos were more effective than epidural injection. According to K. et al. 2015, due to a lack of efficacy, epidural injections are not medically necessary in managing pain and function, not only in spinal stenosis, post-surgical syndrome, and axial spinal pain, but also in disc herniation and radiculitis. According to Manchikati et al. 2016, a meta-analysis of five studies of 39 RCTs that met inclusion criteria and nine with placebo utilizing sodium chloride or bupivacaine with steroid showed a lack of efficacy at 3 and 12 months follow-up. The NNT.com website states 2019 100% saw no benefit, therefore the NNT of infinity. The USDA Drug Safety Communication 2014 tells us this, 
Injection of corticosteroids into the epidural space of the spine may result in rare but serious adverse events, including loss of vision, stroke, paralysis, and death. The effectiveness and safety of epidural injection administration of corticosteroids have not been established, and the FDA has not approved corticosteroids for this use. According to Monkey Conti et al. 2016, 2.3 million epidural injection procedures are performed annually. The Medical Policy Statement MM-0007 regarding epidural steroid injections Part D policy criteria indicated are when all of the following are present. A. Pain is radiating or shooting in nature. B. Less than six epidural injections in the past six months. C. Documentation that the patient received active conservative care first for six weeks documentation that the patient received passive conservative therapy for six weeks, authorization for image guidance with contrast, and proof that a prior injection has a positive response in at least 50% of the cases. According to CSMG 2016, clinicians should not routinely obtain imaging or other diagnostic testing for patients with nonspecific low back pain. An improved report of finding discussions with a patient prescribed epidural injection. A clinician attempting to describe what, how, and why might say this, your diagnosis of somatic and segmental dysfunction is due to an acquired personal habit or other contributors that we will discuss. Your low back pain is likely due to unresolved healing and inflammation. Your pain is not the primary problem, but it will be addressed. When attempting to discuss the differences with or without treatment, the clinician might say this, With epidural injection treatment, there is a small chance that you will feel less pain, but the injection does not solve the underlying problem. It only masks it. About 80% of patients will experience relief without epidural injection. It is not likely that your symptoms will get worse without epidural injection. In an attempt to discuss the scope of practice, the clinician might say this, My office is a medical office. So we commonly offer drugs to treat low back pain. There are other types of care available to you outside my office that do not require drugs. This type of care is called conservative care, and it is equally efficient at treating your low back pain. In an attempt to discuss other options, the clinician might say this, Conservative care includes therapies with non-medical doctors such as chiropractors, naturopath, oriental medicine, physical therapy, and others that do not believe that drugs are necessary to treat your problem. In an attempt to discuss advantages and disadvantages and risks regarding epidural injection, the clinician might say this, The advantage of epidural injection is that a few people get excellent results, but most do not. Research reports that nearly 100% of patients that received three epidural injections in one year did not report lasting low back pain improvements. The disadvantages include infection, paralysis, temporary increase in pain, no improvement in low back pain, and of course death. In an attempt to explain the expected treatment results and the time frame, the clinician might say this, There is no way to predict when epidural injection will be effective or to what extent. In an attempt to explain what to do if the results are not satisfactory, the clinician might say this, If epidural injection does not seem to be working for you, then I recommend starting conservative care. However, the best treatment plan would include conservative care even if you choose epidural injection. And then finally, in an attempt to explain the efficacy disclosure, the clinician might say, since there is significant risk and the expected results are poor, I do not recommend epidural injection. Epidural injection is commonly prescribed for low back pain even before conservative care is offered. A first line of care for nonspecific low back pain should never be an invasive prescription with poor performance and with poor patient satisfaction. 
Since the mechanism and efficacy of epidural injection is not predictable and comes with harmful possible side effects, clinicians can improve patient outcomes by creating cross-culture associations with conservative care providers, since pain is not the only problem. Thank you for joining me today. Let's advocate for improved patient satisfaction and for the profession. Let's demonstrate a cross-culture willingness to strengthen medicine. Thank you.